Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Adeptus Ridiculous Podcast. My name is DK Diamantes. His name is Bricky. And oh boy, 40K, man made horrors beyond our comprehension. But before we get into today's episode, if you enjoy the episode, consider maybe supporting us at patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous, where you can get access to our Discord, uh, bloopers if they happen. The $15 tier gets you access to all of our HD posters in digital format without the watermark. So consider the following, patreon.com slash Adeptus Ridiculous. Bricky has vital information for your daily life now. Vital information. Vital. It is paramount to your survival. Uh, I wanted to give a giant thank you to each and every one of you who purchased the fantastic Halloween merchandise. Uh, it has, and also happy late Halloween to, as the first of November. So yesterday was Halloween. Yay! Oh, yeah, nice. Good stuff. Um, but uh, I wanted to thank all of you so much for that. Uh, everything has is no longer uh, available except for uh, the awesome little hat, as well as the uh, as the, the little Lord T. If you want to still pick those up, those are sticking. Uh, and uh, and the posters, of course. Um, mm. And uh, the mats are still on sale. Also, for those of you who do not uh, remember or did not see the uh, music of the third. Trading card game mats were restocked. They are available. Grab them because they look really, really good. Hell uh, yeah, brother. They look spicy. And uh, we are going to be doing our book club on Eisenhorn most likely this week. Um, though I got some scheduling stuff, so it might be the next week. But regardless, it will be happening very soon. So finish up the book. It's time to finish the book. And yeah. uh, we'll get we'll get talking about it. We haven't forgotten I still have nope. a couple hours left on it, though. To be fair, so I've kind of, I, I kind of sort of did forget a little bit, but that's better. Okay. Better late than never. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. He's a uh, good one. All right, DK. Unfortunately right. for you, oh no! We are, don't say it. Don't say. It. Please tell me you don't have a quote again. Come we on, we're man. back to quotes, buddy. We're Damn back it! to quotes. It's all <laughs> no. It, you had your reprieve for uh, a bit of time, but oh no! All right, all right. No, I. I, you look. If you acquiesce defeat, you've already lost. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna slam dunk this. It's gonna be an absolute win. He says as Karma just rears back and loads up a right hand. How, how dare you use words like acquiesce in my presence? You know I don't know what that means. <laughs> That's true. You never seen Kill Bill? So it's, it's a quote from it where she's like, "Oh, I can't do it." And she's like, "Oh, you failed because you acquiesce defeat." You know? You okay, don't well, accept it. You know? I have seen Kill Bill, but then. This is like makes up for every quote that. Never mind. Yeah, SpongeBob just give me the quote so I can just 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 give me the quote so I can screw it up and make everyone look smarter by comparison. Well, you gotta beat me for that title. Uh, All right, <laughs> just give me the quote. <laughs> <laughs> I claim this world in the name of the Emperor of Man and his Imperium. I bring justice and truth for the loyal, punishment and death for the guilty, and the spoils I take by my own hand. Mm. All right, so this is this is a loyalist chapter. Correct. Uh, well, loyalist uh, something. Loyalist something, true. Uh, and the spoils they take for themselves, huh? That, that, that's, the, that's the kicker of the quote, yeah. I mean, the, the it, first part is any goddamn Imperium person. It is, it is. So they sound kind of almost like pseudo-pirates. You know, where um, I'm just going to shot in the dark it and say because we still need to do the Space Wolves that maybe it's the Space Wolves because they're like kind of Vikings, kind of they, they kind of do be doing a little raiding and um, they are very loyal and would never turn on biggies. So I'm, I'm going to guess the Space Wolves. No. No. Oh, it's all not right. the Space Wolves. Well, all right. Well, tell me who it is then. We're doing a fun episode today. One of those one of my favorite episodes where it's less about specifics and a lot more about ideas. The Rogue Traders. Oh, well, that's not even fa- That's, man, you... The spoils I take... For my own hands. Yeah. True, yeah. Yeah. True. 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 And I, I, I guess the rogue traders would be very loyal to the emperor, wouldn't they? Well, yeah, they're they're imperial sanctioned uh, explorers, yeah. among other things. Yeah. I, I, I had it, too, in my head that this was going to be a space marine thing. So, well, hey, look on the bright side. I was right. I screwed it up. 
You, you did. You did play the video game. I did, and I'm looking forward to playing it. When does it come out? This. December 3rd. December 3rd. Ooh, that's close, actually. It is. About a month. I I, uh, lose my life to that game. I think I might do the same. Uh, It is (laughs) It is rare that I am ever excited about a 40k game. I am normally very hard on them. Uh, But this one actually looks like it might be very good. Mm -hmm. Question is, are you getting the big waifu statue? Yeah. Hell yeah, brother. Let's go. But uh, yes, Rogue Traders, uh, a a fun episode because uh, where I do sometimes struggle with getting hyper specific details, I uh, do like the ones where we can just discuss the overall concept of them. Uh, Now, for those of those of you viewers who are old heads and um, uh, and, and don't like like don't expect anything from like. The 1990s John Blanche Rogue Trader <laughs> kind of content, because uh, 40K started out as just Rogue, Rogue Trader. Trader. I was gonna yep. say I actually knew that. I don't remember w- when I learned that, but yeah, it, it started out as Rogue Trader, and then it became 40K. Well, Shy says she's found an entire <clears throat> PDF for Rogue Traders in extreme detail and forgot to send it to me. So maybe we'll have a follow up episode one day to kind of so- go through more hyper specifics. So we all goofed today. We've all done a little a little bit of goofing. We got a little too silly. Oh, man, we're just silly little guys. Is that what you're saying? We're, we committed the crime of being a, li- a little silly and a little little. Mr. Electric, they're just a little silly. Mr. Electric, cremate this man. <laughs> He's just a little silly. Um, but anyway, yes, yeah, so, so the Rogue Traders were actually... One of the way OG first edition things. If you'd love to, I mean, look at this artwork. Just like, like, oh, <laughs> oh yeah, dude. That is that is peak old GW. That it is. It is just like classic old Warhammer style. Now, I mean, I like the new, darker and grungier artwork, but you gotta appreciate the old. John Blanche style art. I mean, he he built the foundation of 40k as a yeah. style. So what what year was this that this came out? Because this must have been the what nineties nineties. I was gonna say for the time it was probably pretty great. Like people would probably see this in the nineties and be like, "Whoa, look at the art!" Right? Oh so, God. Yeah. Uh, 1987. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right all right all, all right, right. Uh, yeah, pretty, but, pretty good yes um but uh wow that that is that's is old that's old stuff uh but yes so it was not discussing the the old gaming of of rogue trader the old play style it's discussing what rogue traders generally are yeah and, yeah, yeah and you yeah. honestly probably already have a somewhat better idea than most of our topics because you have played the game I have. Um, or at least like some of the game because it's it was beta. I got to be honest with you, that was a long time ago, or it feels like a long time ago. And there's a not a lot about the story and stuff that I really remember. So, oh, that's fine. The story of of the of the game Rogue Trader is very different than Rogue Traders. Okay. So, a Rogue Trader is a like like five different things all at once. It generally depends on the type of Rogue Trader. Uh, the thing that is the most important and the most to know is that out of anybody in 40k, if, if I had, because no, no one ever wants to live in, in Warhammer because it's the worst thing imaginable. Mm. But if there was ever a singular person where it, you would say that it is worth to live as <laughs> and, it, and it, it's the job you would want, it's either maybe like a planetary governor or like some high level aristocrat mm-hmm. or a rogue <clears throat> trader. It is one of the only positions in all of Warhammer where you are almost basically free. Wow. Yeah, that's that's. You want that. You definitely want that. You definitely. mm. Yeah, you, you are basically a sanctioned explorer merchant. Oh, the conquistador, if you'd like, uh, you know, um, <laughs> mercenary, pretty much anything sanctioned by the Imperium to go out and do with what you must. 
hand oh, okay. handle it, it is like it's like the inquisition where you basically are like you have unlimited power but the difference is is that instead uh you still are underneath the inquisition but it's you have almost unlimited power and can do whatever you feel like and yeah, I was gonna say it sounds a lot like the Inquisition in the sense that you sh- you flash that inquis- inquis- inquisitorial rosary and it's like that's your free fast pass to get whatever you want. That is your get out of jail free card. That's your license to kill. That is your everything. And it kind of sounds like rogue traders are very similar. They they have their own kind of inquisitorial rosette, which is known as the warrant of trade. Uh, it is the most important thing that any rogue trader will ever have in their possession. A warrant of trade is literally a sanctioned document warrant from Terra that says, F- around and find out. <laughs> also, it's just a piece of paper. Like they don't have like a um, like a medallion or like the in- Inquis- Inquisition has their uh, rose rosette or whatever it's called rosette, yeah rosette i said rosary whatever maybe they wear it on a necklace it's fine um th- it's they do just, sometimes it's just a it's just a piece of paper that any I, well i guess anybody could steal the rosette too but i mean it's a it's a piece of paper signifying more than anything it, it's like it's like having i don't know, like the, the deed to your house like you have it as a piece of paper but like you're still oh you still yeah. own the thing fair um it's not like someone just steals a warrant of trade and like oh my god i've lost my permissions like there's <laughs> There's backups and et cetera. Okay, okay. Um, but the the warrant of trade is the legal document that allows for the operations of the rogue trader. Um, often it's a charter and often it's hereditary. Uh, rogue traders very very frequently come from a long lineage of dynasties, um, families and houses. Uh, rogue traders are can often be spoiled rich kids. Um, oh, you can be born into being a rogue trader? I mean, you're born into the house of, yeah, like, sure. a rogue trader. Yeah. And and then eventually, like, the rogue trader, you know, because I, I think in the video game, your superior, the rogue trader, dies. And you oh, take yeah, up the yeah, warrant yeah. of trade. Right, that's true. Yeah, yeah, they do die, and you do take up their sort of office. Right, right. So, with that, you basically have been given free range to do whatever you'd like. Uh, so long as, of course, it serves the Imperium. The Inquisition mm. is still above you, as is, you know, the Lords and Terra and all that kind of jazz. But mm-hmm. the job of a road trader is specific enough to the point where it requires full autonomy. Um, which is, naturally, the road trader's job is to explore and and set explore, settle, trade. Um, you know, create diplomatic discussions. Mm-hmm. O- honestly, it's anything that can help serve the Imperium and expand its reaches across the galaxy. You are an explorer. You are full stop an explorer. Okay. Just exploring on behalf of the Imperium, you know. Just a more uh, a more gentle version of the Inquisition that's looking to uh, uh, make connections and trade and, oh, better the Imperium. We're not the evil Inqu- Well, the Inquisition isn't evil, but you get the idea. So Shai has a great quote here, which is the warn of trade and a starship to enforce it. These are the critical tools for a rogue trader. Without the former, he is merely a renegade. Without the latter, he is a forsaken drifter doomed to an anonymous death. Ooh, so, that is a good quote. I like that. You need both. And, and I mean, you know, we all we all are Mass Effect heads in here. Yes, uh, sir. A, yes, sir. A specter is not too far from from the concept obviously you do more but like the specter is more of a council's military mercenary yeah uh, whereas a rogue trader is definitely meant to be an explorer an explorer okay okay sure um yeah, way I was gonna back- say specter is more specter leans more towards soldier really right it's more military yeah yeah um yeah. Granted, everyone in 40K has a militaristic attitude, but... <laughs> yeah, that's true. You kind of have to be a little bit of a soldier in 40K. Otherwise, ugh. So, rogue traders went back all the way back towards the Great Crusade. And the reason for rogue traders was uh, basically a scouting individual. Uh, Big E had a giant fleet of Mechanicus and Astartes, and they needed to go there, but obvi- uh, go a pl- to a place. 
But obviously, as is the problem when you are having enormous amounts of troops and ships, the logistics take a long while. You are, go slow. Mm-hmm. And so because of this, they hired different kinds of scout people that would go out and check the area first before the giant fleet would arrive. Oh, okay. So essentially the rogue trader started out as like scouting parties to make sure that, you know, no unforeseen stuff happened. And it was like, oh yeah, this, this little area, it's good for settling. You're not going to run into any Xenos. You're not going to run into the armies of chaos here. We're good. We're good. You can bring in the ships. Uh, The emperor can come here if he wants. We're good. Uh, Or better yet, it's we're going to fight this enemy Xenos or something. We believe this area is hostile. Go out, find their numbers, map it, and then come back. Okay. Um, That being said, uh, very often this would lead the individuals, the rogue traders, because they're so much faster with their ship or small contingent of ships, that once they got there, you know, you're you're going out into uncharted space. Dangerous job, huh? Really dangerous job. You generally have no clue what's on the other side of that. Yeah, because you're the scouting party, so you could run into unknown Xenos and just get obliterated. Or got or a, a warp rift, or or God oh, knows yeah. what. Yeah, it's 40k. Um, you could run into any number of untold horrors beyond your comprehension and just get swallowed into oblivion. Not to mention the fact <clears throat> that the uh, uh, that travel isn't the safest thing in general either. Uh, that's true. Yeah, just traveling in 40k is very dangerous. Sure. So basically, because of that, the often when the rogue trader would arrive in a system and when they would come back, they would always be a little more ramshackle because they're on their own. They, they are completely on their own. They need to make emergency repairs. They, they might plunder a, a, sp- pay, a, a space. They might steal artifacts. Sometimes they might need to uh, commandeer sp- special ships. So sometimes a rogue trader will return and it'll be their craft a random like naval craft they had to take over, maybe like some Xenos artifacts they needed to get on the other side, like whatever. And this is back in 30K, so mm. um, Xenos artifacts were not like the wor- like the worst thing on the planet like they yeah, are I, now. I, I was going to say, isn't that a smidge bit heretical? Aren't there a few people in the Imperium that would be very, very unhappy with them bringing Xenos artifacts? But yeah, if it's 30K then it's a little more acceptable, especially if you're a rogue trader, too. And they were just like, yeah, I just I needed to do this. There's there's an interesting hypocrisy that goes along with the Imperium, where the <laughs> higher up you get into the general um, ranks of the Imperium itself, the, the more, more the rules don't matter, <laughs> the, the more the rules don't matter. <laughs> yeah. Like the Calidus assassin has a Necron phase sword, for God's sake. This is true. This is true. But but darn, they use it well for their uh, assassin duty. So uh, we'll let it slide, right? Yeah, yeah. Like the custodians are not people who are like, oh, heresy. They just they just kind of <laughs> do their thing, you know. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um. So and, and you know, God, the fact that the emperor was making a webway an Eldar tech thing would probably true. send people into spirals. Yeah, if the, the general populace knew what the webway actually was and how he got the idea for it, eh, it's true. True. And I mean, the Inquisitors, for example, can sometimes use the help of, like, demon hosts. Ah, it's the Radicals, right? Yeah, the Radical uh, 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 Inquisitors are can be a lot more, you know, and, like, sanctioned demon hosts for their retinue. And it's like, <laughs> oh, yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yes, rogue traders are arguably the, the number one most the rules don't apply to me people. Because even Inquisitors have to uh, submit to a Lord Inquisitor or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, an Inquisitor not only can speak to aliens, they can uh, attempt diplomacy with aliens. Is like, is what Shai said true? She said, in modern 40k, war and a trade permits rogue traders to interact with any culture, while a regular citizen will get shot for saying the Tau exists? Is it, do regular citizens, if they're like, oh yeah, I saw some blue Tau and they sure were, uh, oh man, I hope the Imperium wipes them out, they'll get shot for that? I mean, shot is, I mean, is a little hyperbolic. I mean, obviously, oh, if, a, if okay. a guardsman was like, I fought the Tau, they'd be, they wouldn't be like, oh, don't speak of this. But no, like, yeah, okay. 100%, 100%. Okay, okay, okay. But the, the, the point, though, specifically, is that 
they can do this kind of stuff. They can mm-hmm. they can go out and talk to various kinds of cultures and other you know specific races and attempt this kind of diplomacy because you, you think about what a rogue trader is designed to do. They you're given a warn of trade, and your job is to because like God, I looked this up before, but solar systems in the Milky Way. <laughs> a couple, just a few. One or two here or there. Just a little solar system. Right. So there's like a couple. There's a few. (laughs) Okay. All right. Yeah, a few. Uh, Please tell us what the spectrum of a few is on a galactic level. Like it's thousands upon thousands (laughs) upon thousands. I was going to say there are like untold amounts right there. and that's in one galaxy that's right, in right. just the milky way galaxy whereas the rogue traders can go to like any galaxy they want far and oh. away light speed warp speed whatever no they, they actually don't ever leave the milk so the milky way is between 100 and 400 uh, billion oh. stars um 100 to 400 billion stars and god knows how many planets that might be orbiting said stars Mm. Uh, but no, um, 40k exists entirely in the Milky Way. Remember, because the Tyranids come from the dark space between oh, yeah, galaxies. Yeah. Why did I think that there were multiple galaxies? I guess, I guess, because in my head I was like, oh yeah, if the Imperium has billions of planets, surely they've got to be on a, a a bigger scale than just the Milky Way. And I guess dumb brain does dumb smooth brain thing. And yeah, well, that that's the funny part is that the Imperium constantly boasts a million worlds. A yeah. million worlds, and the Milky Way galaxy consisting of a hundred to four hundred billion stars, you know, and the amount of planets that can go with that means that there is always more an uncharted area. Yeah. Um, and so the the reward for charting this out is is insanity. Like you could be a rogue trader and you go out to you know go into different kinds of star systems and try to find something there next thing you know you discover a night world <laughs> an old school like like night world like all the mm-hmm. others that you can then assimilate to the imperium next thing you know you have an entirely new night house in service to mankind and that that's like uh, insane the power that that uh, gives yeah that is that that would be pretty crazy so you know that kind of stuff. I think is uh, I think is like where it really starts to uh, get kind of crazy with with <clears throat> the importance of what a rogue trader's got to go do. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, like they they expect they do expect results. They they want you to do stuff. They want you to chart out space. They they want you to or, or they'll, you'll find a world like oh my god, this world is literally made of adamantium. Uh, <laughs> Hey, what's up? Uh, what's up, Admech? How you doing? I bet you yeah. like this. And Imagine then, if you just found literally a floating planet-sized ball of adamantium. Yeah, like, like the ad- the Admech would cream their servos for that. You, you might become the new Omnissiah in their eyes if you did that. <laughs> and, and then you know, it's not just that stuff, but like you might run into an Eldar race on like a Garden World or something, and mm-hmm. there might genuinely be a point where you need to strike a deal with them: one, not to kill each other, uh, <laughs> and two, to share the resources from this area, or or like you take yours, we'll take ours. Mm-hmm. Or sometimes knowledge, I mean, shit, knowledge, knowledge oh, alone, yeah. like the Eldar know a lot of stuff. You could ask them about X or Y, and mm-hmm. then you have to parse if their silver tongued Xenos is telling yeah. the truth. But knowledge is power. Also, I was wondering, are Xenos, like, say, the Tau and Eldar, are they more receptive to a rogue trader than if, like, I don't know, just like an Imperial Navy ship showed up. They'd probably be on like super high alert. But if they got a message from someone's like, yeah, I'm a rogue trader. Here's my warrant of trade. They probably wouldn't be like, oh, God, we have to open fire. Kill it. Kill it. Kill it. It's Imperium. Kill it. Right. They'd be more receptive to a rogue trader, wouldn't they? Depends on how much they know about it. I'd say definitely craft world. Definitely Tau. Leagues of Mm. Votan, 100 percent. Yeah. Um, Orcs. Good luck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's <laughs> orcs don't really do the whole talking and negotiating thing very well. 
Necrons wouldn't even speak to you. They would no. just kill you immediately. Well, I yeah, mean, like Chaos wouldn't, obviously. Yeah, like you said, the Necrons just don't like humans in general. And yeah, I mean, orcs do work with rogue traders sometimes, but normally whatever the rogue trader gives them, the orcs then turn on them because that's just what orcs do. Oh, right, because you told me a story about like a like there were orc mercenaries that would work with uh, the humans, and then as soon as the job was done, they would immediately turn on the humans or something. Orcs will almost always work with humans to get bigger guns and then eventually <laughs> use those guns to hit hit the humans back. Fair enough. That is very orc. Sure. Sure. Yeah, it's it's, it's very classic orc life. Gotta um, get that big shooter. But, you know, there are all, all kinds of other possibilities that can come with it, like worlds for settlement. It's always important. A, a habitable world that can uh, now, you know, have new colonies. There's exploration is a huge part of it. but there's also just the mercantile stuff, mm-hmm. you know, because there's like port cities in random locations of just regular ass humans in or or fancy planetary governors. And that fancy planetary governor may have found the funny green box <laughs> and the funny green box is actually like a Necron hollow field that makes it so that if anyone shoots anything at you, you can teleport away and be amazing at everything. And it's like. Well, hello, I'm Mr. Rogue Trader. I would like to buy your funny green box because that is so good. Yeah, that is that is tech you definitely want. And at the very least, even if you don't plan on using it, it's like, well, now someone can't use this against the Imperium and we can at least safeguard it and, you know, put it under the golden throne and make sure it's well guarded. Not to mention a rogue trader as someone who hails from a lineage and has someone who hails from a dynasty is very concerned with getting really rich. <laughs> they are traders after all, so you got to you got to you got to make a little money too, sure. Rogue traders care a lot about being fabulously wealthy. <laughs> they want the fanciest drips, they want the most gear, they want the coolest artifacts and they want everyone to know about them. I was how many uh how many rogue traders get a little too greedy and a little too big for their britches and maybe go a little corrupt. Oh, that happens. <laughs> I was going to say it probably happens kind of often, maybe. How yeah. many like really honest and good rogue traders are there? Well, so Shine makes a, a good point. When you find something really rare, do you give it to the Imperium or do you keep it to yourself? Um, you know, like, like, do you utilize this thing for yourself? And in a sense, you make a, you make a good point, but you're, if you're a rogue trader and you start going out into uncharted space, you'll, if you're not up for the task, you'll be dead right quick. Very You'll be, you'll be dead in a a couple expeditions. Maybe Mm -hmm. rogue traders worth their salt are, are good at their jobs, even if they are wealth seeking assholes. (laughs) <laughs> yeah they kind of have to be like it i guess it's another one of those um jobs where like if you're an old rogue trader you're probably pretty scary because you have seen untold horrors in your long life and that you're still alive to talk about it is you know you're probably a pretty skilled uh person do you remember that guy we talked about in the blackstone fortress things uh janice drake the guy with the with the cool eye patch or the the, the, the monocular and like the the beast wrapped around his back. Yeah, actually, I, I I do vaguely remember that. Sure, yeah, and he was he was documenting all the weird and crazy things, right? Yeah, he was documenting all of the crazy Xenos he saw um, on the Blackstone Fortress. Yeah, and, so, and wasn't the pelt literally one of those crazy things that he found and killed or something? Yep, because uh, you know he wanted he hunted the big game, and he himself had a crew on his team. Remember? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He did. Also, so, such a cool pelt. It is a really cool pelt. Damn. The the guy looks really awesome, but he himself, like most rogue traders, are super greedy assholes, but they're also <laughs> like really competent. It's it's the it's the kind of guy who talks the talk and walks the walk. Ooh, scary combination. <laughs> so he, for example, he himself, you know, like you look at his drip, for example. Mm-hmm. You, he's got this cool pipe and everything, but he has this fancy pantsy like force laser sword 
He, mm-hmm. I think that little monocle is actually like a laser beam as well. Oh. Uh, tons of times the rogue traders have digital weapons, as in the little finger rings that are lasers and stuff. <laughs> I still can't get over literal digital weapons. Digits. <laughs> it's their digits. It's a laser in their finger. <laughs> I can never get over that. This lady is actually pretty cool uh, because she has oh. a, a laser rapier. Like like mono thing like that, and you look at I mean look at the drip. I mean, goddamn! Oh, that she is so cool. Oh my god! Yeah, like that is the kind like that little flowy thing of silk is probably some Eldar Maiden World export silk or something mm-hmm. that that costs like a, a regiment of guardsmen uh, <laughs> to buy. Whoa, that is uh, th- look. That's got to be peak drip. Like it, it doesn't get a whole lot better than that. It's really cool. Agreed. Um, that so, rapier is really sick too. Oh, oh yeah, the, the little the laser hyper rapier. Laser. Yeah. Oh my god. Sheesh. So while they are servants of the Imperium and all that stuff, they want to get theirs. Like mm-hmm. that adamantium ball I mentioned. It's like, yeah, Admech, you are going to pay me for the location of it. <laughs> yeah. And and, and, and you know, handsomely. Yes, I, I will receive a handsome reward for my uh, uh, for my various deeds. And I also expect to be put in uh, in like a local paper and everyone mm-hmm. will know about how great I am. They might give him a literal planet for that. They might just be like, yes, this planet is now yours. Congratulations. This is yeah, but you. He can't really be uh, he can't really be sedentary, though. Being nomadic is a is a oh, thing yeah. that traders just do. Yeah, yeah. Um, but that kind of goes into the different kinds of traders there are. A lot of them tend to specialize in a certain part of their field. Um, there's the one that uh, Shy posted up a little bit, the the really wide dude with the big sword and the red and the gold. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. He is like, will be like a scoundrel. The, the rogue. <laughs> no, certainly <laughs> not him. Scoundrel? No, no. He looks the- so upstanding and genteel. He he is the classic like Han Solo scoundrel. He he gambles, he drinks, he he tries to turn every situation into his own gain while still serving the Imperium. Okay. okay. So, you know, he might he might be the kind of guy who goes to a planetary governor and and tells him, uh, play me in a game of cards if you're so damn cool, and if you lose, I, I get to take your your best bodyguards for my ship. Ooh, and then he swindles and cheats at the card game. Because and then he, he gets it. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. Um, there's okay, the okay. merchant prince, which is a fun uh, archetype. It is not through violence or anything, but entirely contract. Uh, oh, okay. All about making contracts. They, they are the logistic uh, road trader. They make the supply lines. They they uh, do deals. They're they're a little close to mafia boss sometimes. Okay, so With they're the, not exactly like the soldier type that's going to go in guns blazing or anything. They're just going to strike up a contract and, and just go about business. They, these quotes. are, yes, they, they create networks of profit. Mm-hmm. They, they, they create lines and trading <clears throat> rights between people. Sometimes they're actually just really good political negotiators. Uh, oh, where yeah, it's like, yeah. hey, I really want to... Make sure that planet A, who hates planet B, shares their resources, and this will be the person to get in between. Right, right. And I imagine since they're always writing up contracts, they would naturally be very good at negotiations and maybe making negotiations tilt a little heavily in their favor. Sometimes the best contract is the one that's forced to be signed. (laughs) Well said, well said. That sounds like a quote actually from 40K. It, it, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, that sounds like something a 40k person would 100% say. Uh, you have the Explorer, which is the most self-explanatory. They are the simple, it's fun to push the boundaries of the Imperial space. I ah. want to see what's there. What's next? Uh, and probably the most dangerous job for the rogue trader to have. <laughs> One of the di- most difficult. Yeah. Going uh, they're, into the they're, unknown in 40k when the warp exists and the Xenos exists is a tricky proposition. 
alien aliens, alien beasts, all kinds of nightmarish things out in the middle of nowhere. Literally you gotta be, nightmare space popping up out of nowhere. <laughs> Not to mention, you got to be really good at sharding because uh, mm. if you're spending all your time popping in and out of the warp, you got to make sure warp travel is acceptable. That the uh, that the 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 tides of the Sea of Souls aren't going to really cause you problems. Yeah, um, there are some other interesting uh, ones though. There now, granted, this is the Imperium, and some rogue traders are missionaries. Their job oh. is to send out the Imperial truth and. Uh, and allow for the god emperor of mankind to be prolific in the every or um profi- proficient prolific whatever everywhere yeah yeah you the ubiquitous god emperor yes ha- establish the religion in places they may not have the religion an old human settlement far away from the imperium and they need to be brought the gospel ah uh, uh, yes of course they every rogue trader is a silver tongued devil, but the missionaries are often the same, but with a bit more of a z- zeal to them. Ah, gotcha. I was gonna say, like, you would think every rogue trader would be a little bit of a missionary trying to spread the good word of the emperor, but I guess that's sort of the main appeal of a missionary, right? Like, they'll do all the trading and stuff, but it's like the main thing is like, no, no, spread the good word. That, and they also will refuse to work with Xenos very often. <laughs> I guess that makes sense, yeah. Uh, then there's the diplomat. The one who is all about relations. Less mm-hmm. about the merchants uh, side of things, but just making sure everyone is on the same page and happy. They uh, often consider themselves to be the most pragmatic and will work with Eldar and Tau and the like very mm-hmm. often. Well, they are diplomats, so they probably would have to. Some have uh, gone as far as to earn such amount of trust that they have stepped foot on the craft worlds of the Eldar before. Wow. Which is... That's kind of a big deal, isn't it, for a human to step foot on a craft world? It's enormous deal. The Eldar (laughs) do not like when that happens, so... I was going to say, like, you have to have an absolutely, like insane level of trust with the Eldar for that one. <laughs> Damn. What, like... But both sides. Say, what could you possibly do to, like, even gain that kind of trust? Like... Hey, if you... There is a galaxy of horrors. Who, <laughs> who knows? You, you could have assisted them fighting off chaos. You could have uh, traded important resources. Who knows? There is always a soul stone that you found and been like, hey, you might want this. Yeah, Yeah. you never know. Uh, And then lastly, the last one is the the most uh, humorous, I'd say. Uh, Some rogue traders just fall off the deep end. (laughs) And they become absolute psychopaths. Yeah, I could see that because it's like no matter which one of these you're under, it's a tough job. And I'm sure you are prone to a little bit of the old psycho. And so sometimes they'll just want to do their own thing. I I really want to go and uh, this planet I am going to take over because it's an old feudal world and they have no resources to to defeat me. So this is now my planet and uh, I am going to be king here. So what you're saying is they're a rogue, rogue traitor? No, not necessarily. They're still sanctioned. (laughs) Okay. I mean, look at Inquisitors. True. True. That's true. Inquisitors very often go off the deep end and nobody knows about it until it's like, oh, that's that's chaos that you've cited. Oh, well, gee whiz. Now we have to do something. That's true. They can be considered renegade rogue traders. But if you're still bringing stuff back to the Imperium, one bombed world isn't much. (laughs) I love how just... Cavalier, <laughs> we are about ah one bomb world, not a big deal. As long as you're still supplying the Imperium with goods, ah, what's I, one lost world? Eh, fine, have your little kingdom. Hey, some <laughs> sometimes those rogue traders will just, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's forty k. Like that's not even the craziest thing that would ever happen, right? No, God, no, not in the slightest. Not even remotely close to the worst thing that could happen. So. For the most part, that's kind of the different ways rogue traders tend to make their way. 
uh, th- there are like other variations, and to an extent, they all kind of bleed into each other a little bit. A diplomat and a merchant prince, mm. and you know, could be also a smuggler and explorer. Like, like you know, they're all very flamboyant personalities. Mm. So they could all become God knows what. Um, yeah, like you don't necessarily as a rogue trader have to fall into just one of these categories, right? Oh, yeah, no, definitely not. They, they all yeah. bleed. Just sometimes you might specialize in a certain one because it's just more fun that way. Yeah, sure, sure. Um, you know, there's actually some rogue traders that you can have on the tabletop. They're a bit of an older minis, but they were called the um, Elucidian Star Striders. Ooh, what a name. They, they oh, were pretty I like cool. that. Uh, they're they're an interesting. Their, their minis are a bit old, but they were c- contacted by Gilliman after the Great Rift, and to find new non corrupted worlds for the Imperium to colonize. And immediately, uh, the main rogue trader, her name is L- 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 oh my god, so difficult, Elusia Vane, because uh, Elucidian Elusia, mm-hmm. Elusia Vane uh, was like, first off, how much will I be paid? <laughs> and then she agreed. Took a, a, a small fleet of ships and started searching for new worlds. Um, they had a problem with the Geller Field, and Nurgle took them over. It was like a little smaller oh. mini game where you ha- play as the Nurgle and then the the, the uh, rogue traders and stuff. Um, Ooh, that's no fun for them. But for the most part, uh, it's kind of neat to see all of the interesting, like quasi gear they all have. Okay. For example, the the rogue trader herself has a giant, like, green feather on her head. Here's the picture. She's the one in the center. Um, She has a big old green feather, and uh, she has a corset that has a refractor field in it, so she has a force field to keep herself alive. so cool. Very flamboyant. I believe she has a Dark Age of Technology pistol as well. Old school, just really high-powered pistol. Mm Mm-hmm. And so, you know, they they make their way out. They, that, that's like one of the rogue traders' entourage. They kind of go through. They have a little squad of bodyguards and the rest. Um, and they are dripped out, though. They Rogue traders are always so dripped out. They, they're like, covered yeah. in drip. That's like half yeah. their thing. Rogue traders are so cool. God. the uh, You need to be dripped if you're going to show people that you're worth something. Mm-hmm. And boy, they they do show it off like that. That plume on the helmet that you mentioned, sheesh! And that oh, yeah. that pistol is bigger than her freaking arm. Yeah, it's a big gun. That's crazy! <laughs> like, how does she even lift that? And but anyway, so along with this, of course, a rogue trader will often have a ship. Well, no, not often. They have a ship. They need a they ship. They have to, yeah. And the ship can vary in size, but as we know, most ships are also like thousands of crew. Mm-hmm. Because of the lower decks and the guns and the rest of that kind of stuff. Yep, you need a crew just to load the guns, right? Get the bullet yeah, in there. The gun gangs. Yeah. <laughs> um, but they might have like their own personal entourage, but they do have themselves their full-on crew. And sometimes it's not just one ship. Sometimes it has multiple ships on their uh, group. Of course, the more ships you have, the slower you become. But the more ships you have, the more powerful you are. Yeah. Um. Sometimes rogue traders often just just like have an army. Well, yeah, I, I could see that. I mean, they have an obscene amount of money and their job is very, very important. So, I mean, I could see them needing a big old battalion, a big old fleet to help them out. So, yeah, that that tracks. Uh, sometimes they literally have multiple regiments of Imperial Guard just in their ship. Yeah. Like tanks, everything, you know? Yeah, I mean, that, it, that what they're doing is super important, especially if they're like the explorers or whatever, and they're going into unknown space. And it's like, well, if we run into something that's hostile, I'm going to need a few people. So, yeah. yeah, that makes sense. Hey, you'll you'll need some you'll need some groups. And sometimes you might go to a new planet and the human population there just isn't really stoked with your rogue trader world and, and tells you to, to, to piss off. And so you land your ship and you deploy your tanks and you take the world by force. Yeah, for the Imperium, for the Emperor. Yep. Sometimes you got to wage war. 
Yeah, you that, know, forty k most of the time. You do need in. You do need a little war. Just just a little war. Just a little war. Just a little war. Just a what, little human planet that doesn't want to sign itself over to them. Just a little war. Just a little war will fix that. And, and you know, it does often. A little <laughs> yeah. bit, of, a little bit of war does help, and yeah. uh, and and it'll often help to get them what they need. It, hell, I mean, often a lot of um, a lot of rogue traders. Not a lot, sorry. A, a couple of rogue traders have at times made packs deals with certain Astartes chapters and been oh. like, what's up, Raven Guard? Here's a whole bunch of stuff to help you recruit more people. All I ask is that when we need you, you can give us a contingent of strike marines for a problem. And then they might call upon that favor. Next thing you know, rogue traders got a squad of space marines helping them out with their whatever they're doing. And do you know? That can yeah, happen. I mean, I guess in my head I was like, oh, you know, <clears throat> they could never get the Astartes because, like, you can't buy an Astartes. But it's like, well, you're a rogue trader. You're for the Imperium. They know you're for the Imperium. And Space Marines are, you know, they're super soldiers, but they're still people that need stuff. And if you give them the right stuff, sure, they'll help you. They'll send a few troops your way for the right price. Sure, yeah. And sometimes not even just the right price. Sometimes it's uh, the, right cause. the right cause, especially. Mm -hmm. And yeah, you get a space wolf as a, a space wolf as a uh, as a companion in the new Rogue Trader game. Oh, yeah, you do. I, was that in the beta or was that just in the trailer? Because I didn't get to that point in the beta if it was there. I, I don't think you get the I don't think you get. Them. Yeah, I, I didn't yeah. Uh, play the beta very much. I yeah, want to save it for the full game. Yeah, I know it was in the trailer, but yeah, I don't think you got there in the game or in the beta. Yeah, the uh, and you do get well, not an Eldar yet. too, right? Yep. Uh, there is an Eldar. There's an Eldar <laughs> Ranger. There is a Jukari. Uh, which I want is the fascinating. I want the <laughs> That's a little heretical too, but whatever, bro. Oh, there's a there's a lot of of fascinating characters you can bring to your entourage because the rogue trader needs the right group. Uh, yeah. Without the right group, he will fail very quickly. And you know they they got that silver tongue to them. They they true, know who to bring true. on. Yeah. In yeah. in the game, you have. Uh, Oh yeah, Shy is correct. The the Jukari <laughs> is romanceable, uh, both for the both for the male and female. I have nothing wrong with that, but yeah, I mean, all oh, I know, but of of course, romanceable Drukari is just like all right. What exactly does that Drukari consider romancing me? Because, ouch! I have uh, I have heard I, I have heard that it is uh, a little screwed up. No kidding. You're telling me that romancing a dark elf who their entire existence is, man, I need to cause more pain and suffering so that Slanesh doesn't eat my soul. You're telling me romancing that is a little out? No. Br yes. Br no. No. Sir, please. At this time of the year, at this part of the country, <laughs> localized entirely within your kitchen... <laughs> um but no i'm but no the the general you know the i mean we like look at the game in general the retinue of characters is what two eldar a space wolf a sister of battle an astropath uh an unsanctioned psyker an imperial <laughs> navy like uh general or or admiral mm -hmm. uh a sanctioned Inqu inquisition psyker and like a like a tech priest it's it's it is it it's far and wide. It re um, it really is. Who you have on your team is entirely what will they listen to you? Can you control them and how helpful will they be? Turns out Mr. Janice Drake going through the Blackstone Fortress found it incredibly useful to have a crew with them because he could eat things and tell him information. Yeah. Yeah. You need the right team for the right job, sure. Also, uh, even after saying all that, I'm romancing the Drakari, by the way. Oh, uh, god damn it. 100%. The, the, the Sister of Battle is not romanceable, um, which that is... That kind of uh, makes sense, actually. That, that, that kind of makes sense. It's, it's very unfortunate, but I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go hop onto the, the Astropath. No, gonna... no, no, there is... Really? A... You're not going to find a mod? Come no, on, it's there... on PC! There is a... Um... Uh, what is it? Uh, there's like a smuggler scoundrel lady who I think is kind of neat. So I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go there. 
Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Sounds good. I'm really looking forward to that. Robot yeah, Shadow that's game. her. Yeah, <gasps> oh, she looks cool. Got the robot arm and everything. All right. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, you, you, you've, you've convinced me a little bit that yeah, maybe there are other ways other than the the Drakari. You know? Have I? Well, no. You're gonna, but whatever. You're gonna bang the navigator. I know you are. I mean. So, look, I literally don't even know what the Drukari looks like. I'm just saying that because, I don't know, it sounds funny, and it sounds weird, and all that. Um, he looks pretty cool. Yeah, he does look pretty cool. He does look pretty cool. But I don't know. The um, the, the the ranger looks pretty good, actually. I don't know. I don't know. All right, we'll, well see. We'll see. We you, have until December you, to figure it out. When you have when you get to your 100-hour playthrough and you make your decision, we'll, we'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, anyway, uh, so... I guess last but not least is a question. Where do rogue traders come from? And there's a, there's a lot of places. Uh, there are obviously it's a lineage, of course, but, uh-huh. but not every rogue trader is a lineage. Some rogue traders come from or are, are newly appointed. Um, okay. Often you might get a planetary <laughs> governor or an imperial commander. That's just like this person handled this planet so well that they are going to go off and, Go do it more with other planets and stuff. Okay. Um, you might have, say, a really high-ranking member of the Imperial Guard who is just oh fantastic service as a Lord General and is making their way into newer and more interesting uh, aspects of, of the service. Mm-hmm. There's the uh, Navis Imperialis, which is the classic Imperial Navy. Uh, this one is unsurprising as... Being good in naval ship on a naval ship is a major trait of being a rogue trader. No kidding. Uh, administratum sometimes. Oh yeah, for the contract stuff, they administratum would probably be very good for that. Sure. Yeah. Uh, high ranking merchants in merchant worlds also a possibility. Rogue. Uh, trader, the interesting sure. one is often the uh, inquisitor. This is this is a bit oh. of a of a rare one um, because inquisitors are often above and have their own stuff like rogue traders do. I was going to um, say, is that like if an inquisitor does something bad, they get demoted to rogue trader until they can prove themselves worthy of being an inquisitor again? You're almost there. Uh, oh. It's more of a higher ranking one giving them the warrant of trade as a way to remove them as a possible rival. In oh, inner politicking wow. <laughs> 40k stuff. So it's a scumbag move on the part of the Inquisition to oh wow. That's 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 kind of big brain, actually. It happens more often than you might uh, might think. A lot of higher ranking members in the Adeptus Terra might do that because giving someone a warrant of trade is basically like, here's your paper. You are now legally obliged to fuck off. <laughs> So well, so you're telling me if an Inquisitor was given a warrant of trade, like, then immediately, it's like their status is immediately, like, nope, you're not an Inquisitor anymore, you have to be a rogue trader, turn in your rosette? Most likely, the people who give it to them are above them, like a, a high oh, lord of terror, right, maybe, right, or something. Right, 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 sure, okay. So, yeah, like, if, if yeah, they, if they get it from someone above them, a lord Inquisitor or a high lord right. of terror, then, then, yeah, like, sucks to suck, but here you go. So if if one of them are just like, oh man, he's rising up in the ranks a little too quickly. My position is at risk. They could just do that and be like, ah, ha, 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 I'm fine again. Uh, pretty, pretty much. What sometimes. A dick move. <laughs> uh, the the inner politicking of of 40k is is astronomical. That's yeah, fair. It the, is. the the amount of times where someone fucks over somebody else because of some kind of ridiculous political position is extreme. No matter how no matter how much you, we talk about the the greater good of the Imperium, no matter how much we discuss like the the <laughs> zealots and piousness of of the Imperium, at the end of the day, humans are in it for themselves. True enough. True and enough. so and so often a rogue trader who is also often in it for themselves mm-hmm. will go out and uh you know what's Be one world for sure. yeah what's one world what's one world when i'm they, giving all this to the imperium they did not want to sacrifice their greatest silks for my blouse so um die <laughs> do, do you think a rogue trader has ever done that like you wouldn't make me a dripped out outfit bomb them uh absolutely 
There, there's no way in hell that one psychopathic, greedy rogue trader has not gone out and requested something, been denied, and then shot multiple people. All right. Well, I mean, you are a rogue trader. You do have that sort of, uh, you do have that status where you are not bulletproof, but, uh, you know, almost. I do what I want piece of paper. Yeah. Whew. Sheesh. So, yeah, it's uh, it's it's pretty fascinating. There is yeah, road um, traders are fun. They they're, they and are the 40K most forty k fun, f- right? Forty <laughs> k fun. Yeah, they're the most free. They're mm-hmm. the most do whatever I feel like kind of people. Yeah, as long as it's for in the Imperium's name, you have basically free reign. Basically, pretty much outside of a couple scenarios. Yeah, basically free reign as long as it's for the Emperor. For the Imperium, I'm doing this for you guys to, you know, then yeah, free reign ish. And, uh, see this <laughs> Jesus, paper, peasant. <laughs> it gives me legal right to have Eldar waifu suck my dick and balls. <laughs> wow, Gilliman has fallen very far. <laughs> she, Gilliman is just rolling. Well, he's not rolling in his grave because he's alive. Hooray. But yeah, that's uh, that is that is a that is a sentence and a half there, Shy. Thank you for that. Appreciate it. G- Gilliman <laughs> Gilliman wishes he had the rogue trader. <laughs> yeah, he does. He wishes he had that piece of paper. He's like, man, where do I get it? I want to make but, this uh, rain thing canon. Uh, but yeah, that that's that's rogue trader stuff. That is the the rogue trader general gist. Um, they are fun. Just kind of like I can do what I want for the most part, people. And if you ever want a a spot where it might actually be enjoyable to live in the 41st millennium, they probably are the ones. Yeah. Like you said at the beginning, either them or some uh, high up noble that can just sit in his bourgeoisie palace and not do anything and not even care. Nope. Nope. So it's good stuff. Hell yeah, that was fun. I I like the rogue traders. I like the dripped out kings and queens. I like that. I it, it is a great time. Uh, it is a great great time whenever there is uh there is rogue traders afoot. Uh, I find them to be relatively nice. A nice change of pace considering what normal uh Warhammer is like. Yeah. Thankfully, this one didn't involve anyone horrendously turning into a chaos puddle of tentacles and mouths to suffer for literally all of eternity well yet (laughs) yet true they could it could happen to them one wrong one wrong traveling you know yeah chaos doesn't really care about your warrant of trade no they they really don't (laughs) they can't even read they're like dorn who cares god damn it all right i'm gonna go i'm gonna go take this piece of paper to gilliman and tell him to sign it (laughs) (laughs) Thank <laughs> you.